Chairman, and uh, thank you so much for scheduling this uh, hearing. Uh, thank you to all the witnesses, panelists. Uh, really appreciated the uh, article in the Politico, uh, Mr. Templeton and Dr. Jackson. Uh, the testimony that you all presented to the committee contains many uh, common elements, and indeed there are topics that are frequently discussed uh, in this room, especially the importance of promoting uh, STEM uh, education and the role of creativity and innovation in maintaining America's leadership uh, position in the global economy. Now, when I am out talking with constituents and industry leaders about this topic in my district in Oregon, especially about the role that creativity and innovation play in driving our economy forward. Uh, many of them express uh, the importance of STEAM education, which is integrating arts and design in traditional STEM fields. Innovative companies uh, across my district from uh, uh, companies like Nike uh, and tech giants like Intel rely on employees with a mind for science but an eye for design. And we have discussed how integrating arts and design education into traditional science education can yield the sort of creative, innovative workforce uh, that many of you identify as essential. And beyond just the benefit for the industry, bringing arts and design into STEM classrooms can help keep students engaged. And I know, Dr. Jackson, you talked about drawing students in. And uh, I, I want to tell you, I visited a STEM, a, a STEAM, uh, elementary school in my district uh, that took STEM and added arts and design. Those kids were engaged. They were acting things out. They were talking about uh, uh, tying the, they were studying soil erosion and graphing things and uh, drawing charts and planting a garden and playing with worms. I mean, they, they were really, really engaged in everything that they were doing. So uh, in order to keep students engaged, uh, I want to have a discussion about uh, STEAM. And, Mr. Templeton, you, you affirm that, that government primarily conducts basic research, while industry focuses on the D side of R&D, developing products for commercial application. In your experience at Texas Instruments, can you discuss the importance of creativity and design to this product development process? Uh, Dr. Vest, you discussed improving learning in the STEM fields for students and uh, suggested promoting exciting learning through projects and experiences rather than just boring memorization of facts. And as you see it, could arts and design play a role in STEM uh, education, uh, especially in the learning atmosphere you envision with your comments? Well, on the, uh, the aspect of creativity, uh, the simple answer on that is yes. Uh, it is one thing to have numbers and concepts if they cannot be brought together and visualized and turned into uh, a product. Uh, uh, it is knowledge that, uh, that will not uh, lead to productive things. Uh, it is also a case, and uh, if you look at uh, STEAM efforts, we have uh, very recently done something with one of the school districts uh, in North Texas. And I think it's got great potential for the creativity that it can bring along. I do think it's important while we look at that, back to Dr. Jackson's comments of we have to be mindful of the basics, be it the math and science principles, because if we don't have that foundation in place, you can never get to the, some of the higher level concepts as well. So I think keeping those in balance is a wonderful thing. Thank you. Dr. Vest? It's a very perceptive question in my view and, and one I get pretty excited about, so you may have to shut me off, Mr. Chairman, but I, I cannot imagine MIT without its visual and performing arts component. It would not be MIT. We would not attract the same kind of kids. And it's very much a part, in my uh, opinion, of what has to happen at both K through 12 and uh, in, uh, in uh, undergraduate and even graduate education in our universities. Rising above the gathering storm tried to emphasize we're not telling all kids we want them to become professional scientists and engineers, but everybody needs to know some fundamentals today about science and engineering. Uh, my experience, if you look at virtually any of the really good high schools that are succeeding, high tech high, and in San Diego and so forth, the integration of arts into their curriculum is a very important part. I commented on the maker movement. This attracts kids from left brain, right brain, everything in, in between. And uh, I, I'm frankly a big believer in the STEAM movement. 
There's a hearing somewhere in Congress coming up over the next several weeks that uh, my wonderful friend John Maeda from uh, RISD, the Rhode Island School of Design, uh, is, is helping to, to organize. It's, it's so a, I'm a big believer in it's this. It's from today. <laughs> but it always leaves me in an odd position because I also know that we are failing in our core STEM areas, so right. it, it's difficult to talk about the breadth. But yes, arts and uh, and uh, the humanities are a very important part of, of building creativity. Thank you. And I'm afraid I'm out of time, but Dr. Jackson, if you, if, if you want to just ask. Now, you didn't pose the question to me, but we believe so much in it that we have built an experimental media and performing arts center at Rensselaer. And it is both a very high-end cultural and performing arts platform, and it's a research platform at the same time that brings the arts, engineering, the sciences, the computer sciences all together. And we have various venues within it, but one in particular allows us to do visualization, animation, simulation, acoustics, haptics, haptics where you can simulate touch. All of this requires bringing all of the disciplines together, including in the arts. We have a games and simulation arts and sciences curriculum and it uses that whole structure mm -hmm. to animate what students do. But at the same time, we feel that uh, fundamental studies uh, in certain fields of the humanities, arts, and social sciences are critically important. And so we've built those up as well. But the, you know, it's funny, we've gotten into these buckets about what constitutes the liberal arts versus what constitutes science and engineering. But if you go all the way back to Cardinal Newman, about the original definition of the liberal arts. They were, in fact, together. Thank you very much. And, and I'm out of time, and that, that uh, meeting is a week from tomorrow, and we'll let the committee members know if they would like to attend.